Hi everybody, we are going to talk about the polarity and solubility of organic molecules. These two things go together. First, let's talk about polar bonds. Polar bonds are simply when electrons are not shared equally between that covalent bond. Uh, electronegativity plays a huge role in this. Remember, our uh, strongest, most electronegative element is going to be fluorine. So the closer an element is to fluorine, the more electronegative. Also remember that the bond between carbon and hydrogen is nonpolar. They share equally for all intent and purpose. We'll, sh we'll say that they share equally. We also use these symbols. Uh, this is the lowercase d in the uh, Greek alphabet. So we call this a partial positive. And it's that delta with a little plus sign. This is called a partial negative. And again, it's that little delta with a negative sign. Uh, so a little bit of practice, just labeling bonds. Sometimes you'll see questions that they just want the polarity of bonds. Uh, carbon with chlorine is going to be a very non, or excuse me, a very polar bond because chlorine is so electronegative. Your rule of thumb is if you look at the periodic table, if there's at least one element between the two elements that are being bonded, they are not going to share equally. The electronegativity difference is so great that it will become a polar bond. They won't share electrons equal. So here, <clears throat> I put the partial positive on the carbon, and then each of those chlorines, those three chlorine bonds, are going to be a partial negative. And those are polar bonds, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. Of course, the carbon-hydrogen, that's a nonpolar bond because they will share equally. Now here, we have uh, an example of uh, oxygen with the carbon. Of course, oxygen is going to be much more electronegative than the carbon. So it's going to be your partial negative and the carbon will be the partial positive. This molecule, wow, I'll be honest, I don't even know if this molecule can exist, <laughs> but we have all kinds of polar bonds. So the carbon with all of these halogens, all those um, alkyl halides, <clears throat> they're going to be polar. So carbon is the partial positive and the fluorines, they attract the electrons, so they're the partial negative. Oxygen, of course, is going to be your partial negative. Oh, Let's also put here that those carbons are your partial positive. Again, those halogens, the alkyl halides, those are going to be partial negative, the chlorine and the fluorine as well. Nice. Moving on. Now we can bring everything together and look at the molecule in totality and say, is the molecule going to be polar? So remember, lone pairs especially, well, lone pairs period, are going to cause a polarity. But in organic molecules, you're going to see oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Those have the lone pairs on them. Um, when they're, and you're thinking inside the molecule, the fluorine here, the chlorine having the lone pairs, that's not going to impact the polarity. It's going to be those three, the oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Uh, when they are inside the molecule, that lone pair uh, is going to create a polarity. And then the other really big one is asymmetry. If a molecule is not symmetrical, and when I say that, um, what I mean is the atom you're looking at, the central atom, it does not have identical substituents. If the substituents around that central atom are different, it's asymmetrical, it's going to be polar. So let's look at some examples. Check out this one. I have carbon, and you know that the carbon-chlorine uh, bond is very polar very polar. Chlorine does not share equally because it's so electronegative, but this is symmetrical. Your central atom carbon has four chlorines around it. So yes, these are polar. They all pull in opposite equal directions. It cancels out and makes that a nonpolar molecule. Contrast it with this one up here. I have three chlorines, one hydrogen. This one would be polar. That's a polar molecule uh, because it's asymmetrical. They have, it has different substituents around that central atom, the carbon. Here, I have only carbon and hydrogen bonds, so it's going to share really well, very equally. It will be nonpolar. Uh, and then right here, I have, in comparison, just one alkyl halide. I have that chlorine on the very end. That's going to make that whole molecule polar. This side by the chlorine is going to be the partial negative, and over here, by default, will be the partial positive. Another example, this is an alcohol. Um, so with that oxygen, it's going to make this part of the molecule partial negative. So by default, this part of the molecule will be the partial positive. Now polarity plays into solubility. It goes to that driving little saying that we like to use, like dissolves like. 
Polar molecules dissolve polar molecules. Nonpolar molecules dissolve nonpolar molecules. A couple of notes on this. Most organic molecules are soluble in an organic solvent, and our number one organic solvent is benzene. That's the one that we use the most for our organic solvent, um, for our, excuse me, our nonpolar solvent. Of course, our uh, polar solvent, our number one polar solvent is going to be water. Uh, let's see, nonpolar organic molecules are insoluble in water. Now I do have an exception to this. So overall, we, of course, nonpolar molecules, because they're nonpolar, are not going to dissolve in water. Um, I can have some polar molecules that will dissolve in water, but it's only in a really unique situation. Polar molecules, organic molecules, are soluble in water if they have six or less carbons and they contain hydrogen and nitrogen so that the hydrogen and nitrogen are available to do hydrogen bonding with the water. That's the like dissolves like. They can do hydrogen bonding. Water has hydrogen bond bonding, so it has the ability to dissolve. So there's polarity, polarity of bonds, putting it together, polarity of molecules. Organic molecules, for the vast majority of them, are insoluble in water soluble in a polar solvent, most like or non-polar solvent, most likely going to be benzene. Um, and we do have small polar organic molecules with hydrogen and nitrogen. Those will be uh, soluble in water. Now I want to give you a couple of examples. So hex hexane, I just did the skeletal structure here, is going to be soluble in our organic solvent, that's our non-polar solvent, but insoluble in water. It's because it's so non-polar it won't dissolve in water. And then I have an ethanol here is going to be soluble in the organic solvent, and that's going to be the nonpolar, and it's because my carbon and my hydrogen's in here. And is also soluble in water because of the polarity. You're going to have that partial negative on the side, partial positive. I've only got two carbons, so it's less than six, and it has oxygen, so it can do hydrogen bonding. That OH, it can do hydrogen bonding. Cholesterol, this is going to be a large, much more sizable uh, organic molecule. It will be soluble in an organic solvent, um, something like benzene or uh, tissue, right? Living tissue is um, also very nonpolar and definitely insoluble in water and won't dissolve in water. Okay, there you have it. Nice application for polarity into sub solubility on organic molecules. You're doing so well. Have a great day. Thanks.